so let's get to it. We are planning our electrical build for our steel sailboat, drilling holes and painting, moving and shaking so we can get this project done. This is Luke and I'm Lori and we're building a steel sailboat from scratch to sail around the world. And if you want our little friend Leon to live out his dreams as a pirate in the open seas, subscribe to our channel, like this video and ring that bell. It's a totally free way to keep the journey alive. Our friend Diego is back and he's giving us his expertise on how to make our plans for our electrical and plumbing build a reality. This is the planning stages, certainly the less glamorous part of boat building. And we are planning on making the Lahakai fully electric. That means no diesel engine, not even a gas stove. There are many challenges to accomplish this. The main one being that no matter how much research you do, manuals you read or videos you watch, everything must be tested in real life to see what's the actual outcome. All of these figures of energy being consumed are variables and can differ from situation to situation. So we will build our best case scenario knowing that we will probably need to make some adjustments and modifications as we go. So we head into the office to make our shopping list. We'll go over all the detail of the build, but for now, it's pencil to paper. Another challenge is here in Brazil, there are very few examples that we can base our build off of or resources we can look to. Over 99% of the boat motors in Brazil are diesel. And though solar panels are often utilized, it's generally just for selected 12 volt electronic equipment or lights. But we are excited to take on the next chapter of building the living, breathing heart of the Lahakai. To power our electrical boat, we are going to use three solar panels that can generate up to 1,150 watts of energy. We also want to have a wind turbine that can generate up to 250 watts. When combined, this setup, the solar and wind potential can produce up to 1,400 watts of free renewable energy. And that's not including hydro generation. To capture this, we will be using lithium batteries. And though the cost of lithium is significantly more expensive than typical lead acid, the benefits are undeniable. In comparison to lead acid, lithium batteries are on average 55% lighter, making a big difference when it comes to our weight distribution. A battery's depth of discharge is the percentage that a battery can be safely drained out of energy without damaging the battery. And with lithium batteries, this can be up to 100% meaning more usage. And once you drain those batteries, you're gonna need to charge them up. Lithium is said to charge in a fraction of the time. So how long do these batteries last? Well, lithium wins again, hands down. So perhaps you really do get what you pay for. And all of these facts will be tested out on our boat. We're going to try to work with two battery banks, one made up of eight lithium batteries that are 160 amps and 12 volts each that we will connect to make 48 volts. This battery bank will be connected to our MPPT solar charger controller through a 48 VDC input and 127 volt power inverter. And it's going to generate energy for our electric pod drive motor and also other appliances that are run on 127 volts like our water maker, cooktop, and more. And we will also have a secondary battery bank of two lithium batteries, also 160 amps and 12 volts that will remain 12 volts. This bank will power our 12 volt devices like lights, chart plotter, toilet, fridge, sewage treatment, and much more. Hey guys, I'm in the container right now looking through all of the items that we have and seeing if there's anything that we need to drill holes for and prepare the hull. Uh, before we paint. For instance, here is a windless 
quick switch that we purchased from Equinox. It's a really nice website here that has really almost everything that you could possibly need for boating and stuff. And we were able to find these at a really nice price. Um, and here it is. You see, we gotta go onto the boat now and we gotta drill this into the deck so we can actually have this laid down. We're probably not going to drill, see they have three of these. We're thinking about just using like thick flex and gluing it pretty well on top and then just having this to go in to the deck so we don't have too many holes. There's no steel hole, hull with holes is not good. Um, so we have to install that. Another thing here is we have these inspection hatches. Um, and as you can see, they're plastic, but they have little holes that they have to drill. So we've already had cut out the holes for them, but we need to drill these little holes here in order to be able to secure them onto the boat. So something that we have to also address before moving forward with paint. We have also, prepared our aluminum, oh my God. We have hatches that actually came with the boat. These are wonderfully large size hatches and normally they're very expensive. So this was one plus of the boat, <laughs> one minor plus, but so here we have holes. As you can see, these, these need to be drilled into the boat. So this is repaired. We're also gonna to have to address things like through holes because we have a toilet, so that's the exiting. We have a water maker that's entrancing and we actually have a sewage treatment as well. Somewhere around here, we even have some pumps. So we're gonna to have to drill all of the through holes now. Our friend Hinaldo from Inner Coatings is helping us get the right products we need to seal our steel hull. He helped us understand the importance of the first treatments of the steel after sandblasting, how many microns of sealants would be ideal, and more importantly, how do we achieve that? And with that, we got to painting. Okay, we're gonna start our coating systems now with International. It is InterShield 300, this gray color. We're gonna coat the whole boat with it and then go from there. Okay, now that we finished that, we're gonna apply the same thing, another coat of InterShield 300, except this time in bronze. As you can see, the first one was a silver color. As you can see here, silver. Um, and this way, when we're alternating colors, we can see if any spots were missed and go over it again. And then after that, we're gonna do another silver color.
planning isn't glamorous, nor is watching paint dry. This is the first of three of many coats that we will be applying to fully seal the hull and make it look beautiful. And when we're doing boring things, we like to think of all the amazing places we will go and things we will do when the Lahakai is finally in the water. We know that for the first initial months, we will be learning, training, and sailing locally, exploring the nearby areas of the south of Brazil. And then we'll need to get used to sailing the Lahakai and doing many tests to see if there are any issues or things that we'll need to fix before we head further from the coast. Then the world is our oyster. We thought about heading down to Cabo Horn and testing the waters there, or maybe heading up the coast of Brazil through Panama. We even thought about heading to Delaware to the Annapolis Boat Show in October, but it's entering hurricane season, so it won't be possible to sail there. There is a lot to consider and so many places to go. Where do you think we should go from here? What kind of adventures excite you the most?